Do you feel like your fear sometimes holds you back from really pushing yourself in something or even getting started? Have you considered that fear can be both healthy and unhealthy and when to distinguish between the two? How would you feel knowing that you can actually change the meaning of fear, disarm it, and therefore reframe your entire relationship with it? If you nodded your head yes to any of these questions, you're going to absolutely love today's Monday Muse. Welcome to The Balance Theory, a podcast aimed at arming you with tools and tips so that you are well equipped to not only identify and define, but own your own definition of balance. I'm your host, Erica, and thank you for joining me today. Hello, balancers, and welcome back to The Balance Theory podcast. You have tuned in to a Monday Muse episode, which if this is your first time here, is the first Monday of every month where I do a solo episode on something that I think is really important to all of our collective balance. And so today's topic is one I've been thinking about for quite some time now. It's one I've personally felt on an ongoing basis at quite a large scale, and I really do feel like it's a shared experience. And so I'm really excited to be chatting about this with you all today. But before we dive in, as most of you would know, if you you are a regular and this is not your first time, I do like to share little morsels of things I've picked up either in my reading, through listening to other podcasts, or just through like my meditation practice as well. And there was an awesome tip given in one of the Headspace guided meditations I was doing the other day. And they said this, your me time is simply being present. So whenever you reserve that small window for yourself, that is the opportunity you've got in your day to be present. And I thought that was so beautiful because I think a lot of people conflate the idea of me time. They think they have to sit there and meditate or do something Zen. But I really do think that this concept is really up to you to decide what that means. So if we look at it as being present, that could mean you're playing with your kids or cooking or going for a walk and just admiring and being in awe of the beauty around you or journaling or drinking your favorite coffee and being in total, total bliss. So whatever that looks like for you, I thought that was a really nice way to look at me time and to sort of give you back the power to define that however you like and whatever makes you feel present. I thought that was a really nice way to talk about that. But now on to the topic of today, the whole concept of rewriting and disarming our fears. So today I really wanted to focus on this topic because I really feel like it's a big player in so many of our lives. And truthfully, I had a little bit of a realization the other day that spurred this entire episode, and that is we don't actually fear things themselves. We fear what those things mean. So simple example, imagine you are in fear of getting fired. So being fired isn't actually what you're fearful of. It's that being fired would mean that you are incompetent, not worthy, etc. Insert whatever makes sense for you, whatever meaning attributes to getting fired. So this might seem like a bit of a dirt statement, but there's a really subtle power in this. And this is what I realized and really wanted to talk about today. And that is if what we fear is the meaning of something and not the thing itself, then could we not rewrite the meaning or change our relationship with the meaning so that we kind of disarm that fear completely? I.e. if, for example, What if being fired didn't equal your incompetence or didn't mean that you were a bad person or whatever you kind of attribute as the meaning? What if it meant something completely different, like the opportunity just wasn't meant for you or life is changing you into a different direction, etc.? I'm sure you can see where I'm heading with this. But before we really dive into changing the meaning of fear, I really want to talk a little bit about fear itself. Now, just a reminder for anybody listening, I'm not a qualified psychologist at all, life coach, anything of that nature. This is purely my personal thoughts from my own experiences, from my conversations with other people, and just through my own kind of personal interest, all wrapped into one to bring you kind of my thoughts on fear and the role it has to play in balance. So I just wanted to say that because obviously I respect and acknowledge that there are some fears that really do extend beyond things that we're going to be speaking about today on the podcast. And that's obviously when we can reach out to qualified professionals. And so this framework or today's topic may not work for every single fear that you've got, but I think it's a really gentle framework to understand our relationship with our fear And really just disarm it in a way that gives you back the power to create the meaning of it in your own life. So I just wanted to throw that in as a little FYI, but now we can dive straight into the content. So in preparing for this episode, as well as having heard it on other podcasts and books before, 
I discovered that. I mean, some of you may already know this, but it was something that I didn't actually know that fear can be both healthy and unhealthy, which I think is not something that we really speak a lot about. So in the healthy sense, fear is programmed into our nervous system as a survival mechanism. So think back to like caveman times, it would have been extremely useful to feel fear when you have a saber toothed tiger standing right in front of you, or when you're in a dangerous environment, etc. It you know, usefully kicks the body into the right mode to keep you safe from danger. Today, what that might look like, for example, I don't know if you see a poisonous snake in your backyard, your fear prompts you to run back inside, close the door. That's sort of a healthy fear. The feeling of fear is natural and it keeps you safe, as you can see in certain situations. So unhealthy fear, and I think we can look at this in a more modern sense. I think it makes a lot more sense to us today in the 21st century is when it makes you that extra cautious or that more cautious than what you actually need to be to just stay safe when it prevents you from doing things that you would otherwise enjoy. So this could also maybe look like a phobia or even uh, if you're somebody, and I mean, I felt this before too, with just the thought of something, it kind of gives you like a deep anxiety or stress without that thing actually being presented in front of you. Also, another thing just before we go on in dissecting healthy and unhealthy fears is I do want to point out that you might not actually call your fear fear. You might call it stress, worry, panic, but often I think we use these words and when we're talking about the same emotion. So sort of just anything you view as like an unnecessary burden or stress or anything like that, I think can really be wrapped into this conversation. Now, in relation to the unhealthy fee, my therapist gave me this really awesome acronym to break this down a little bit further. And that is false evidence appearing real, which I think is really, really awesome. So in reality, often we worrying, we're worrying about something that has not imminently presented itself to us. So in effect, it's a false scenario as appearing as though it's real happening right in front of us right now to a point where our bodies literally react the same way, even though that thing isn't happening. So obviously there are those deeper levels of fear that translate into anxiety and phobias, which I am not equipped to educate anybody on. But I think that this concept of fear is a real shared experience and one that I've absolutely felt myself. And in unpacking it, I hope to equip you all with some tools on how to maybe rewrite the meaning of fear. And now that you understand that it can exist in both a healthy and unhealthy way, you already have that awareness piece about the nature of fear. Remember, it's not always an evil and often it's actually quite necessary to keep you safe. It's those situations we're looking for that we may be being overly cautious or preempting the unknown that we feel stopped in our tracks. Maybe you're hesitating for no real apparent reason just because you're quote fearful. That's where we want to consider the why we want to dive into the meaning behind our apprehension or our worries. And that's where the magic can really start to happen. So let's dive deeper a bit more into the meaning of fear. So I want to open up this conversation with a little bit of a visual first to really tap into the way we attribute meaning. So I want you to just imagine, and it's going to be a little bit graphic, but stay with me here. I want you to imagine getting a knife put into your stomach by a stranger. So in scenario A, this is by a random person for no reason in the middle of the street. The meaning is there that they are harming you. In effect, you're basically being stabbed. However, in scenario B, Same thing, a knife's getting put into your stomach by a stranger. You're on a surgical table and the surgeon is the one inserting the knife. The meaning is that they're helping you. This visual serves purely to show you how the exact same thing or the exact same action, that is the stranger inserting a knife into your stomach, can have two completely different views purely on the meaning we attribute to it. One is helping and one is harming. So this kind of piqued my curiosity. Can we then rewrite the meaning of things that we're fearing? Obviously, some things are really are just black and white. Being stabbed by a stranger will never be seen as helping. But take that analogy with a grain of salt in how you apply it into your own situations. And remember, it serves purely as that visual just to show us that meaning can change your view on the same action completely. So let's just workshop this a little bit before we go forward. So maybe choose something that you've been avoiding. Maybe you're really worried about or there's a lot of uncertainty around this particular thing. Maybe it's starting a side hustle. Maybe it's fear about the never ending lockdown or snap lockdowns or changing careers or ending or starting relationships. Whatever you feel like is something that you've maybe been avoiding or being a little bit inactive in that space. Now that fear you have towards that thing with the knowledge you've now got from this episode, is it healthy or unhealthy? Put it this way. Is it something directly in front of you right now that you need to make a decision about or will a decision about it be necessary to protect your safety? If the answer is yes, then this is probably a healthy fear. 
and maybe just try and find another example to go through the next bit of the episode with me. Or like you can even choose something from your past that you feel like may have been an unhealthy fear, just so you get a feel for sort of how to workshop these. I'll offer a personal example here. So the fear of failing with this podcast, which a lot of you may be surprised about. I had a strong fear that no one would listen, no one would care what what I have to say or that, you know, it'd be a total flop. I'm sure some of you can see what I mean by an unhealthy fear here. It's almost like a story you tell yourself that keeps you locked up. Now let's do a little bit of a deep dive here. I'm going to be fully vulnerable with you all and feel free to sort of check in with your example as well, or you can take notes and do it a little bit later. So what does this fear mean? Again, we aren't looking at me being fearful about the podcast failing because that's the thing. It's what that thing means or represents. So if we break it down, that would mean to me personally that nobody cares about what I have to say. I have nothing of value to offer and I've wasted my time. Now, is that true? Can I rewrite that meaning? If I really did the podcast and got no listens and decided to no longer continue it, would that mean that I'm a failure? Well, I mean, it could if I let it. But it could also mean that I tried a new skill. I pushed myself to try something new, learned that podcasting wasn't for me, even though it was something I was curious about. Maybe even met a few cool people along the way. Let me tell you, this was the absolute process that I went through. And that was even after I had already started the podcast. The pressure we put on ourselves can be so unrelenting and unrealistic. So let's go back. When I finally decided to not attribute the podcast potentially not working out to mean that I'm a failure, I was able to rewrite that meaning as I've tried something new. I worked out that something maybe wasn't for me that I thought would be. And at minimum, I picked up some new skills, even if I wouldn't keep pushing with it. So let me ask you, do you think I continued to be in fear of no one listening once I rewrote the meaning of that fear? You can absolutely bet that I have my bad days and sometimes it creeps up because we're all human and you need to accept that about yourself. But I'm not fearful anymore that the podcast may not work out. Because I no longer see that as meaning that I'm a failure. I'm not fearful of this anymore because the meaning doesn't make me feel fear. I was able to rewrite the meaning, key, not the thing, the meaning, and change my relationship with it. Same thing as getting stabbed in the stomach or the podcast not getting any listeners. The actual thing itself might be unchanged, but your meaning or what you attribute to it has. And that's where the absolute world of difference is. So balancer. Let's break this down so you can try it yourself if you haven't already. And I recommend even maybe jotting these down so you can take yourself through a little self Q&A next time you feel like an unhealthy fear is holding you back. Or it might even just pop up again. So like I said before, I still have my bad days. And so I really like turning to this framework often to reground myself and re-remind myself of that new meaning. It's like a muscle. You're going to have to exercise it. You've obviously told yourself this story or you've had this thought process over and over that that fear is so ingrained into your mind that you really do need to work at it to change it. But I promise you that you can do it, especially if it is an unhealthy fear that's sort of just wired in your brain as a thought or a limiting belief, things like that. Okay, so step one, I would suggest is make a statement of what the fear is. Make it clear, make it brief, make it very, very obvious so that you can tell yourself what it is, the thing that you're fearing. So for example, with mine, it would be, I fear that no one will listen to my podcast. The second thing you have to do is ask yourself, is the fear healthy or unhealthy? So if it's healthy, it's saving you from harm, in which case it's probably necessary. Or if it's unhealthy, it's going to be something like that false statement appearing real, false evidence appearing real. Again, I love this because it doesn't discount that you actually might be feeling all the bodily feels as though it was a very real fear, as though it was something in front of you, but the fear is not imminent. You're reacting before it even happens. You're anticipating before the thing even eventuates. So once you identify the statement, what the thing is, is it healthy or unhealthy that you're fearing it? Number three is we can look at the meaning. So we need to revisit our statement in point one. And what does that mean? What does that mean if that's true? So if it's true that nobody listened to my podcast, what does that mean for me? Here, you need to be very honest and raw. Let your fear talk. There is no point sugarcoating it because that's the next step. (laughs) Be totally blunt. And you might actually not like what you hear. You might not like the thoughts that come out. But this really is part of the process of disarming that fear. So in my case, nobody listening to the podcast would mean that it's not valuable. No one cares. And I'm a pretty bad podcaster. 
And I can almost guarantee you, you'll probably feel a little bit uncomfortable in this process. It will force you to acknowledge things that you might not actually even think about yourself or some limiting beliefs, but that's really good. You're going to be bringing all that up to the surface. And you got to remember that whenever we feel discomfort, it's a sign that we aren't listening to something that our body is trying to tell us. Remember, our body doesn't have a language. So pain is its communication method. So sit with that discomfort and work out why it bothers you. Do you actually believe the meaning that it's saying? Or is that just a story that you've told yourself? And number four, this is my favorite part. So you've got your statement. You've identified whether it's healthy or unhealthy, in which case you're continuing with this exercise. You've worked out what the meaning is and you've been very honest and raw there. And now you can ask yourself, can you rewrite that meaning and therefore change your relationship with that fear? If that current meaning is not true, or if you want it to mean something else, or if it was uncomfortable to admit, what else could it mean? So in my case, could it be that by having no listeners, maybe I need to do some more research, brush up on some skills, or take a totally different approach? If I never even did one, two, five, 10, 20 episodes, I never would have known that people are potentially not interested in that type of content. So really no listens is now a new metric for me to show that something isn't working. It's not that I'm a failure. It's not that I have zero value. It's just that I might need to change things up, ask for feedback, get a coach, etc. If after a long period of time, obviously this is still unchanged, well, then my meaning could translate to Again, what I reverted to earlier, I tried something new. I put myself out there to learn some new skills, no doubt met some incredible people along the way, etc. You'll see once you're able to identify that new meaning, it's like a switch that fear just changes. You just can't re-see it in the previous way. Something just shifts in your brain. It's quite amazing, actually. And I use this constantly to rewrite some really interesting stories I tend to tell myself, which I'm sure you all have wrapped up in your own minds. So that's my little four-step framework on how I like to disarm fears, shall we say. And you might find this really, really useful for things that are linked to limiting beliefs or limiting thoughts about yourself. So if you're fearing something because you've got this negative self-talk, I think this will be very, very useful. And it has proven to be quite useful for myself, even when, you know, I've disarmed those fears, but the thought will pop up every so often. I like to come back to it and, you know, you you kind of, once you flex that muscle and you, and you understand the process, you can quickly go, okay, what's the meaning with this fear? How do I rewrite it? It becomes quite natural. But something I do want to remind you of all at this point is just because the thought is in your mind doesn't mean it's true. I really find so much solace in this concept because just because it's a thought in your head doesn't mean you have to believe it. A way I like to sort of distinguish, because obviously I, I, I know what it's like, like it feels really hard sometimes when there's a thought in your head and you think that's me talking. But what I like to do is imagine that my mind is its complete own entity. It's smart, it's powerful, it's so complex, but it's not always right. Thoughts do come out of your subconscious from all the things you've done, seen, heard, absorbed, desired, all process and spat out as thousands and thousands of thoughts on a daily basis. So you really can choose to see what you see as truth or not. I like to, well, I try to, it's not always as simple as that, but question myself and have a weird thought and ask, is that true? Do I want to give that space? Do I want to believe that? And you don't always have to say yes, just because it's in your mind. It's just your mind doing your own thing. And I think this is just a really nice afterthought to supplement the exercise we just went through because you'll often find that just by rewriting the fear's meaning, it won't necessarily get rid of the thought that created that fear forever. So often I will have the thought of, oh, what if the podcast doesn't keep growing or, you know, people just drop off or what if I don't have value to give and stuff like that. But I have to come back to that rewritten meaning, which now has evolved, obviously, since I'm over one year down the track. But nonetheless, new fears crop up and I have to repeat the exercise But I really have been able to reapply this method over and over because unhealthy fears will just continue to pop up. And I think the reminder then as the afterthought that you don't have to believe that thought is just so empowering because you can just choose to label it as truth or not. And ultimately, really, it is just how you choose to engage with it and identify it that will define your fears and ultimately you. So Balancer, those are my thoughts on how we can rewrite our meaning of our fears and really disarm them in a powerful way. And I think this is so critical to our balance because I know firsthand what it feels like to be held back by thoughts and overwhelming feelings of fear and apprehension and all those uncomfortable things that really stop you from doing the things that you want to be doing. But just know that by doing a little bit of self-analysis here and working out the meaning of those fears, you really are just contributing to your awareness of them, which is a process that literally disarms them in and of itself. So I really hope you found this episode useful. 
Again, if you haven't had an opportunity yet to leave us a review or rating on Apple Podcasts, it would mean the absolute world to me. I get so excited when I see new reviews and we're almost at 100 reviews, which is a big milestone. So I would really appreciate any additional support. If you guys want to jump over and leave a review, it means a lot to this independent podcast and helps us continue to grow our community. Feel free to send this to a friend or family member who you feel like might want to tune in. Stay safe, stay balanced, and I'll see you all next week for another episode with an incredible guest. I'm so excited for this next month. So stay tuned on socials for who's coming up and have an awesome rest of your week. And that's a wrap for this week, Balancers. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this episode useful to some degree in either steering or determining your definition of balance today. As always, the biggest compliment for us is if you share this episode with someone who you feel might need it, or if you're on Spotify, you can click follow or on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a rating or review. If you have any suggestions for up and coming podcasts, feel free to shoot us a DM or an email. Our Instagram is at the balance theory and our email is the balance theory podcast at gmail.com. Otherwise, you've always got the option of subscribing to our mailing list. We only send you email reminders when the episodes drop so you get them fresh out of the oven. No annoying spam, we promise. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and until next time, stay balanced. Stop, 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 stop.